uh, Stuart Green, uh, and I'm the director of uh, PEP2 for Rare, based in the Philippines. What is the Coral Triangle? Okay, the Coral Triangle is uh, basically, if we were to use the analogy of a human body, um, I'd say it was the, uh, the heart. Uh, it kind of pumps all the fluid, which is the sea, because we live in a blue planet, around the body of the world. So it's, uh, that's the kind of the Coral Triangle. It's, uh, it's, uh, some call it the nursery of the seas, um, it's kind of basically where coral reefs and a lot of the marine uh, resources and species have uh, evolved from. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an area of about two square uh, million square miles um, and it covers the six countries, the Philippines uh, up in the north all the way down to Indonesia, uh, Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea. What is the impact of overfishing and destructive fishing in this region? Okay, so fisheries or marine resources are basically like uh, um, they're, they're a renewable natural resource. So they're something that basically if you, you can take a certain amount from it every year um, and it will produce for you every year. But uh, if you take too much of that resource, like in a bank account, let's say you have a bank account, you get a, you have a certain deposit, you get an interest every year, but with the seas, it's exactly the same, but the more that you leave in the bank account, and in an essence, the less you take, the more you'll have the next year. So overfishing and destructive fishing is basically taking away from the deposit in that bank account. So what's happening is we are taking away from that resource's ability to regenerate itself um, and its fisheries. How can we use no-take zones or marine protected areas to help protect the Coral Triangle? Okay, so uh, basically fisheries management around the world has failed. Uh, we, have, we now have the capacity to be able to catch the last fish, the last whale, the last dolphin, the last shell. So um, historically around the world we've been trying to We've been using fishing gear, we've been saying don't use this gear, don't come in this season, don't take, just take this amount of fish. Um, the scientists have been working with politicians to kind of come up with what they call kind of total allowable catches, etc, etc. Basically that has failed. Fisheries management as a whole worldwide has failed. And 20 years ago we hit a peak of fisheries and then it seems no one's noticed that we're actually in a severe uh, downturn now. So basically we've gone out and we have wiped out the world's fisheries because, not because there's all these bad fishermen, all these naughty people using dynamite, naughty people using cyanide, but because we don't understand fisheries as a resource and how to manage it and we haven't been able to put in policies that manage it. So the lovely thing about marine protected areas is they're very simple and they're very easy and they're very instinctive. So they're basically, it just says, here's a part of the sea, we're gonna put it aside and we're gonna let it regrow. And we're gonna let the fish and the resources from that area move to the sides and we can catch it around the edges. So it's a very simple management technique. And it's kind of, in the, in the last 20 or 30 years, it's become kind of the, the new boy on the block um, in fisheries, but it seems to be something that really does offer uh, a solution to some of the world's fisheries. Can you contrast the Philippines relative to the other countries in the area of the Coral Triangle? Why, why is the Philippines so important? Oh, it's a long story. Philippines has basically, um, it's maybe a few years ahead of the rest of the, corals, uh, the rest of the countries in the Coral Triangle um, in many respects. One in that the dependency on the resource is huge in comparison to the rest of the countries. Um, the population growth and the population in the Philippines now is growing very fast, so they are becoming very dependent on fisheries. It produces 3% of the gross domestic product of the country. We've got 2 million of the 95 million people in the Philippines dependent on full-time fishing as their main source of livelihood. Um, but beyond that, what it gives for the rest of the region is, is 40 years of fascinating experience on how to begin to manage the resources because basically because in a lot of areas around the country the fisheries are in such a bad state communities local executives governors congressmen they're looking for a solution 
and this has been going on for maybe the last 10 or the last 15 years. So what we're finding is there's some fantastic community-based leadership that's showing its head and saying that we have a problem and what are we going to do about it? And this is what the Philippines really has, I think, to share with the rest of the region in terms of um, its develop, uh, participatory tools, it's how to work with communities, how to show that an MPA doesn't have to be a 15,000 hectare no-take zone where all the fishes are not allowed uh, to enter and no one really understands what it's all about, to where you can have a small 25, 50, 100 hectare marine protected area where the community takes on the responsibility for managing their resources and say, hey, we're going to look after our back garden and this is how we're going to do it. And that experience uh, is, is, is second to none around the world and it's something I think that we really could share to the rest of the Coral Triangle. How do you believe RARE's program will contribute or support the conservation goals of this region? Okay, RARE brings a very interesting um, component that perhaps has been missed um, in the Philippines and maybe in the region's um, um, very uh, fascinating history, let's say, within the perspective of coastal management. What RARE really brings in is the, is the, the people side, the, the, the social marketing side of the equation. Historically in the region we've had lots of um, fantastic government programs, we've had scientists, we've had um, lots of um, ex amazing experiments and, um, and very uh, nice technical um, interventions, but what RARE really brings in is it brings in the people side, to the people part of the equation, into the science and into building on the history of marine protected areas in the region. So by bringing in the social side, the people side, adding it with the science side, we put it together, I think we can have a very effective tool for really delivering marine protected areas that not only achieve our scientific goals, which is protecting reefs, uh, looking after fisheries, but really also give some of the benefits back to the communities and make sure they are aware and involved in the whole process of the planning of the marine protected area. And I think that's, the, that's what we're trying to do in the Philippines, is really marry the, the huge experience that RARE's had around the world um, with the PRIDE program, with the, the different kind of social marketing aspects, and marrying that with some of the experience in the Philippines to come up with a, hopefully, I think, a very effective tool. And the, as we say in the UK, the proof is in the pudding, so we'll see in the next 18 months how that plays out, but I have, I'm very optimistic.